Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Stealth Hitches Hidden Trailer Hitch Receiver here on a 2021 BMW X5. So here's what our trailer hitch looks like installed. And that's sort of the beauty of this particular option is that without our accessory installed, we actually cannot see anything below the vehicle, therefore giving us a 100% factory-like appearance. So something else you'll be happy to know is that our hands-free hatch access is still operational with our trailer hitch installed. So adding a trailer hitch to your X5 here, it's gonna be an excellent option because it's gonna make your vehicle that much more versatile. Now we can use the included ball mount and hitch ball if we wanna tow a trailer, or we can switch over to the rack receiver which is gonna allow us to hit the trails by attaching a hitch mounted bike rack or free up some space inside the vehicle for those long road trips by attaching a hitch mounted cargo carrier. So we talked about the two different accessories here. One's gonna allow us to use a bike rack or cargo carrier. The other is gonna allow us to tow. And how we install these, it's gonna be super easy. We're gonna reach underneath to remove our rubber plug here. So this is pretty much just a cover for the latching mechanism so we don't have to worry about any water or dirt and debris getting in there. And then we can take the accessory we wanna use, say we're gonna to be towing a trailer. So we'll simply line up everything. And we'll press it up to lock it in place. And just to make sure it's locked, you wanna go ahead, give it a nice little tug here just to make sure everything was seated correctly. So say we're done towing and then we wanna hit the trail so we need to haul our bike rack. So it's super simple to switch between the two. There's gonna be a little release knob here on the side. That's gonna free up our ball mount and that'll allow us to now attach our rack receiver. Now keep in mind, we cannot tow with this rack receiver here. This can only be used for hitch mounted accessories such as a ball mount or such as a bike rack or cargo carrier. Once we hear it lock into place, we know everything is secure and seated correctly. So another nice feature of our kit here is we can actually lock either the rack receiver or the ball mount to the trailer hitch. There's gonna be a lock core here on the side of the latching mechanism. We can easily just push that in to lock it in place. And then we have our two included keys here that we can unlock that and that'll allow us to then remove either our rack receiver or ball mount. So if we take a closer look under the vehicle here, completely hidden, we have a fully functional seven-way trailer connector here. Therefore, when we're towing those larger trailers, we're gonna be able to hook those up. We also, in our kit here, have an adapter, which allows us to tow a trailer with either a four-way or a five-way trailer connector. So this will just simply plug into the seven-way, and now we'll be equipped to tow any trailer. Keep in mind, some of the larger trailers with electric brakes, those are gonna be the ones utilizing a seven-way. You will, however, need to purchase a brake controller if the trailer has brakes, and we have plenty of great options here at eTrailer. So in regards to the trailer wiring, this is actually gonna be required to tow a trailer, and basically, in the most simplest form, it's gonna transfer the signals from our vehicle to our trailer while we're towing. Therefore, we're gonna be able to let others know out and around us while we're on the road what we're gonna be doing. Now keep in mind, this kit here has a powered module so it's gonna be pulling power from the vehicle's battery. You don't have to worry about the trailer actually pulling power from the vehicle's taillight circuits. And there's also gonna be safeguards built in to where you don't have to worry about any issues with the trailer lights carrying over and affecting our vehicle here. So a couple things to be aware of when we are towing. Number one, this is sort of an all-encompassing package, meaning we have everything we need to tow a trailer, the ball mount, the hitch ball, the trailer wiring, and then the trailer hitch. But in regards to actually towing, there's a couple things we wanna keep in mind. Number one is our kit actually comes with a two inch hitch ball. So we wanna make sure that's what our trailer coupler has. We also need to be aware of capacities. So for the trailer hitch with our ball mount hooked up, we have an 8,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's the amount we can pull outward. And we also have an 800 pound tongue weight rating. That's gonna be the downward force here. Now keep in mind, these capacities are for the hitch only. The vehicle may be rated separately, and if it's lower than the hitch capacities, that's the one we'll have to abide by. So if we take a closer look under here, attached to our latching mechanism and the actual trailer hitch, we have these very concealed safety chain loops. So those are gonna work great with both the larger style clevis hooks 
as well as these smaller style S hooks. So again, everything is just going to be nice and hidden under the vehicle. So in regards to the rack receiver portion, which again cannot be used for towing, but it's going to be great for your bike racks and cargo carriers. It has the larger 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening. Therefore, we're going to have plenty of these accessories to choose from. Make sure you check out our selection here at eTrailer. So in regards to installation, I wouldn't necessarily say anything is particularly hard, but it is going to take you some time. There are quite a few panels inside the vehicle we need to remove, and we really don't need a lot of specialized tools. So as long as you're patient and give yourself enough time to install this trailer hitch, I definitely think it is something you guys can do at home. We can actually go ahead and walk you through this entire process step by step now. So to start off our installation here, we're going to come inside the rear of the hatch and on either side here, we have a little access panel we need to remove. These are what they look like. So the driver's side one is very easy to get out. There's going to be a little tab we just pull straight down. So there's the driver's side one, simply pops out. If we move over to the passenger side, we don't have that little pull tab. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a trim panel tool. We're going to try to squeeze that up at the top to release the clips that way. And then we can pull that one out as well. So now we're going to actually come inside the rear of the vehicle here. So this little floor panel covering right here, we need to remove this. On either side, we're going to have these little attachments here. Simply take our finger, flip open that cover. And then down in there, we're going to see a torque screw. We'll take a T30 Torx bit and we'll remove that screw. So we actually have one on either side. We need to remove those both. And then once we get both of these screws out of there, we should be able to remove the floor covering completely. So once we have those two fasteners removed, we can come here to the rear. Now you want to get a good grip on the floor covering. And go ahead and pull it up. And we see there, there's a shock built in. We need to go ahead and disconnect that from the bottom of the floor covering before we can remove this completely. We'll show you how to do that now. So we're going to need a flathead screwdriver and what we're going to be doing, we're going to come to the top of the shock here and there's going to be a metal C-clip along the outside of this ball and socket joint. We actually need to get our flathead screwdriver in between that little clip and the head of our shock and we're just going to pry that out. That's going to release the socket there and we should be able to remove the shock and then the floor panel covering will come out completely. Just like that. Now with the shock disconnected, we can pull our panel straight out. We may need to lift up a little bit due to the clearance with the hatch. So once we get that floor covering out, you may or may not have a spare tire there in this little well here. We can remove that if we want to give us a little bit more room to work, but it's not required. Our particular model actually doesn't come with it. So the next thing we're gonna do, you may have an umbrella and a spare tire tool here along with a couple other items. We're just gonna simply pull those out this panel here is covering our batteries. We need to go ahead and remove this. And to remove this, we're gonna have several of these little plastic pushpin fasteners along the outside. These are super easy to remove. We're gonna take a flathead screwdriver. You're gonna see there's gonna be a little divot in the outer ring that allow us to pry the center section up. And once we pry that center section up, we should be able to remove it completely. We're just gonna repeat that same process for our remaining fasteners. Now with all of our fasteners removed, we should just be able to lift the panel straight up and out. So the next thing we're going to be doing is removing this hinged panel here. And in order to remove that, we're going to have some torque screws on the inside here. We'll remove those all with a T20 Torx bit. Now we should just be able to lift the panel up and out. You may need to wiggle it around a little bit to release some of the clips and fasteners. Just be careful, take your time so we don't damage anything. Now we're gonna come over here to the passenger side. You can see where we have our uh, trunk latch mechanism. We're gonna be removing this plastic cover that surrounds this. So there's gonna be some clips we need to break free with a plastic trim panel tool. And then we're just gonna be pulling the cover straight back to release the rest of the clips and locks. And again, you just want to be careful, patient, take your time so we don't damage anything. Now 
Now, if we go just directly above that little cover we removed, we're gonna see we have another fastener in here that's hidden behind a little pop-out panel. So we'll take a flathead screwdriver, we'll remove that little panel, or the cover rather, and that's what it looks like. So once we have that cap removed, we'll take an eight millimeter socket and remove the bolt behind it. So now we're gonna come back inside the rear of our vehicle here. So on this panel here, directly behind our rear seats, we're gonna see we have a little plastic cover. We need to go ahead and pry that out. We're just gonna take a trim panel tool there, just pop that out like so. And behind there, we're gonna have a bolt that we need to remove with a 10 millimeter socket. So now we're gonna take this panel here, we're gonna pull this outward. And the reason we need to do that is because there's gonna be a push pin fastener that's still attaching this panel here. So we'll just simply pull this out. And then if we look on the inside here, we'll give you a little bit better view of that, but that's where our little plastic push pin fastener is gonna be. So that's what that looks like. We'll have one on the other side as well. So now over here on the passenger side, we're gonna see two more of those little plastic push pin fasteners at the bottom of this panel here. We're gonna need to remove those. And once we get these both out, we should actually be able to remove this panel by prying it outward. And then we're gonna to need to come out and around our little latch mechanism. So on the back side of our panel here, we are gonna have one connector we need to unplug. So there's gonna be a red locking tab at the top there. We're gonna pry that out. And then we should be able to press down on this tab here and to remove it. So we actually have another cable attached to this panel here. So I don't think we're gonna pull it out completely, but I am just gonna maneuver it back out of the way here. So once we get this panel out of our way here, we're gonna come inside directly above our fuse box. So you're gonna see that we have this little pull down tab here for our sound deadening. If we pull that down, we're gonna see a 10 millimeter nut there, which we'll remove to uh, get our tail light out. Now, so you'll need a 10 millimeter socket, and I'll be honest with you guys, this one's a little bit tricky. If you can get the nut out with your socket still on there, that's gonna be ideal, but chances are the nut is gonna fall down in this panel here. We're gonna have to find it afterwards. I did a couple of these and I haven't managed to get the nut out with the socket. So we'll try our best here to get that out and hopefully our nut stays attached to our socket. So yeah, if you have a little magnet like we had here, that's a nice little trick I just learned there to get that out. We are going to be able to get it even if we drop it there. You're just going to have to peel these panels back a little bit and look through there for our nut. But if you have a magnet, I definitely recommend loosening it, keeping it on that stud, and then fishing it out with your magnet. So we're going to be doing that same thing over here on the driver's side. However, we actually don't have to worry about removing this entire panel, which is nice. It is going to be a little bit of a tighter fit, though, with your tool. We'll simply pull down that sound deadening to gain access to our nut. So because it's such a tight spot in there, you're really gonna wanna need one of these universal joints here. If you have a smaller ratchet with a 10 millimeter, you can probably still get it out. But again, if you have this universal joint, I'd definitely switch over to this. Most of this is gonna be by feel since you can't really see anything. So now on either side, we're gonna be removing the tail light. So we're gonna have some fasteners behind this little plastic cover here. So we're gonna go ahead and take a trim panel tool and we're gonna pry this off. Just like that. And once we get that off, you're gonna see we have some torque screws here, as well as a bolt. We use a T30 bit here, and then an eight millimeter socket down there. We wanna make sure that we have a hold of the tail light there once we remove those two Torx bits. Once we have both of those screws out, we can go ahead and pull our taillight assembly away from the vehicle here. You can see on the bottom here, we have a little pigtail. We're gonna depress that tab. 
and we should be able to pull it straight out. It looks like we have one of those red locking release tabs we need to remove first. And now we'll simply repeat the same process on the other side. So the next thing we need to do on both sides, we need to go ahead and peel back this little fender trim here because we're going to have a screw behind here which attaches the fascia to the body. So we need to go ahead and take that out. Now it's pretty hard to actually pull this off because you want to be super, super careful that you don't bend it and stress the plastic too much. So if you have plastic trim panel tools, it's definitely going to help you here. But we're basically just going to be working our way around the edge of this panel here trying to free up the clips, which are located about roughly here. There's gonna be three of them. So we're just gonna take an assortment of these trim panel tools here and just do our best to release those clips so we can pull the panel back and away. And then if we look under there, you can see that screw. We'll remove that with an eight millimeter socket. So once we get those clips removed, I'm gonna go ahead and cover them with painter's tape because they can sometimes have a tendency to scratch the fascia when we're removing it and putting it back on. So now we're going to come to the back of our vehicle here. We're going to have a deflector here on either side. We're going to go ahead and remove those with a trim panel tool by prying out on the inside first. So once we have those reflectors out behind there, you're going to see an eight millimeter screw. We need to go ahead and remove that. There's one on either side. Now we're going to come underneath our vehicle here on the bottom side of our bumper fascia. We're going to have several of these screws here which are attaching the bottom side of the fascia and these little skid shields here to the bottom of the vehicle. So we're going to have to remove these all with an 8 millimeter socket. There is going to be several of them so just make sure you double check everything over to make sure you got them all. So once we have most of these out we should have a panel here that's actually going to come down. Now that we have the center section out, there'll be more of those screws here holding the side panels on. So we'll go ahead and get those out now as well. So don't forget, we're going to have a few in the back side there, which are a little harder to see. And then we should just be able to remove the panel completely. So once we get this side out, we'll simply repeat that same process and remove the other one as well. So now we'll come to either side here and we can start removing the actual fascia. So we're just going to be pulling out to release the clips. So once you get to about this point here, behind the taillight pocket, you're going to have to take a trim panel tool there and sneak it down into that clip to release it. So we'll have a couple more here as well. As you can see, I'm just shoving my panel there just to release those fasteners. So you're gonna notice that once we get to this point here, it's gonna be super tight, because there's actually a few clips in the bottom here that we need to depress in. So you just sneak your tool in there, depress those, and then pull out. You also wanna make sure that the little half portion of our tailgate here is sort of at a 45 degree angle. We can't have it straight down when we're pulling the fascia away. So over on the passenger side, we do have one connector we need to unplug. There's going to be a tab on the outside there. We'll pull that and we can pull it straight off. So now we'll set our fascia aside in a safe place so it doesn't get damaged. So once we have our fascia off, we're going to come to either side here. You're going to see your exhaust bracket, which is attached to the bumper beam via this bracket here. We're going to take a 13 millimeter socket, remove one nut to lower this off the bumper beam. We have this on both sides.
And then on the passenger side, if we look up above that exhaust bracket, you're gonna see we have one little wire clip holding it to the bumper beam. We need to go ahead and remove that. So now we're gonna come between our bumper beam in the lower portion of our hatch here. In the back, we're gonna have these two little push pin fasteners. We'll take those out. And then we're gonna have two little clips inside here. We're gonna depress those inward. So I actually had a little bit better luck coming from underneath to release that clip there. You can see it's kind of tough to depress it from the inside. So I think that's what I'm gonna do for this other one as well. Just reach my hand up to the back of there so I can release the clip. So with our clips released, we can go ahead and remove this panel. And if we take a closer look, there's actually gonna be one on either side there. So there was that hole, there's actually one on the back side. I just came from underneath and I just squeezed those together to lift the panel out. You can also use a pry tool to depress that clip as well. So if we look over on the other side of the vehicle, you can see we have that same panel. So we'll just repeat that process to get this one out as well. So the next thing we're gonna do is draw our attention to the actual bumper beam. So more than likely, you're gonna have this little panel here, which is for our kick sensors. We're gonna go ahead and remove that. We'll start by removing one wiring harness over here. We have a little plastic clip we need to depress. And once we get that depressed, we should be able to just pull straight out on the connector. Sometimes they're a little tough. Just like that. And then we're gonna have several of those push pin fasteners holding it to the bumper beam. We're gonna take these all out. We will be saving three for reinstallation, but the rest we can toss. So now we're gonna take an 18 millimeter deep ball socket. We're gonna have four nuts on either side, two on the top, two on the bottom, that are securing the bumper beam to the actual body. We need to go ahead and remove each of these. Now with all of our nuts off, we can go ahead and remove the bumper beam. So now we'll take our hitch here, we'll go ahead and set it onto position onto the factory studs. So now we'll take our factory nuts and we'll secure the hitch to the vehicle with the top two studs for now. So two nuts on each side. So before we secure our nuts to the bottom two studs here, you wanna go ahead and make sure we have one of our exhaust brackets on. So we want this tab, this little stand up to be lining up with our exhaust there. So we have one of these for each side. So once we have our exhaust brackets in place, we can go ahead and tighten down all of our fasteners and then we'll torque them to the specifications in our instructions. So now if you remember our end panels that we took off here, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall those at this time. Simply just line up the clips, push it down to lock everything in place. And then we'll reinstall our push pin fasteners. So now we're gonna reattach our exhaust brackets to the ones we installed on the hitch. So we have our supplied hardware here just a hex bolt with a flat washer, and then on the top we have our flange nut. So you're gonna go ahead and lift it up into place. There's gonna be in a little alignment pin there that'll help you. Once you get it started, you're gonna push up a little bit, and you'll take a 13 millimeter socket to secure it. So the next thing we're gonna do, we need to install our latching mechanism. So we're gonna be using the bolts that come with the safety chain brackets so when we install the latching mechanism, 
Number one, we need to make sure that the latch here is on the passenger side. And then we're going to be installing the brackets. You can see we have them outside of the brackets there for the latching mechanism. So these are for the safety chain. So the, the oblong hole is going to be at the bottom. We're going to have one on the other side. And before we install the nuts, we're going to have a Z bracket over here as well. So this comes in your kit and this is what's going to be used to secure the seven way. So once we get all of our brackets in place, we have our bolts through there. Uh, keep in mind, I used a uh, mallet to sort of position this. It was kind of a tight fit in there for ours. Yours may be a little bit different. But now we're going to take a 24 millimeter or a 15 16 inch socket and wrench. We're going to go ahead and torque these bolts down to the specifications in our instructions. So now we're going to move on to the wiring portion of our installation because we obviously have everything torn apart in the vehicle here. So we're going to first start by taking our wiring harness which has our converter box attached to it. In your kit you're going to get some double sided tape, those little foam pads. We're going to stick that to the back of the converter box and then we're going to undo the other side and we're going to mount it to a flat metal surface. So we're going to be mounting this over on the passenger side. There's actually going to be a little pocket in here. We're going to mount it to the floor of that. We can give you a little bit better look at that now. So there's where we have our converter box mounted. You can see it right there. It's just basically to the bottom of the floor there. And then once we have it mounted, we're going to grab the input side of our wires. So these are what they're going to look like. We're going to have several wires coming out of there. We're going to have a green wire, a yellow wire, a brown wire, a red wire. And then we're going to have a purple wire and a blue wire. So these input wires here, these are actually going to go to our taillights. But let's go ahead now and just explain a couple of the connections because we're not going to be using all of the wires. So for this particular vehicle, our red wire, we're not going to be using this. So you're just going to coil it up and tape it to some existing wires like we've done here. Now the blue and the purple wires, we may or may not need to use those. Chances are we're not. So a case where we would actually want to use that blue wire is if we were installing a wired brake controller, in which case we would need to route that blue wire up near the driver area where we have our brake controller mounted. Now, if you do want to tow a trailer with brakes, there's a great option that it doesn't require you to run that wire, and that would be simply to use a wireless brake controller. In regards to the purple wire there, that's going to be even more uncommon. That's going to be for trailers with either reverse lights or surge brakes that have a reverse lockout but most of the time we're not going to be dealing with those for I'd say for the vast majority of trailers. Therefore, we're going to go ahead and secure our red, purple, and blue wires. We're not going to be attaching them to anything. We're just going to secure them to the existing harness that we have here. So now this is going to leave us with a few wires. We're going to have brown, yellow, and green. So this is a little bit more manageable. These are what we're actually going to be making some connections to. So the yellow wire is going to go over to the driver's side. That's going to splice into the stop slash turn signal circuit. The green wire is going to go to the passenger side and that's going to splice into the stop slash turn signal circuit as well. And then the brown wire we're going to route over here to the passenger side as well. That's going to tap into the running light circuit. So here's our bundle of wires and it's pretty easy to find them because if we just trace them up, we'll be able to see them coming back out of that hole behind the taillights there. So you're gonna have this little fabric take on here. We need to go ahead and remove that. But the green wire over on this side is gonna to attach to the green wire with a blue stripe. So if we're able to separate these wires a little bit more, you can see there's gonna be a, or a green one there with a blue stripe running down it. We're gonna take one of our connectors, those black little connectors. We're gonna put one side in the green with the blue stripe and the other side is going to attach to a green wire and we'll just simply close that to make the connection. So then the brown wire which is for our running light circuit that's going to splice into the gray wire with a purple stripe. We can see that one there and you can see we'll just have to go ahead and peel off some of that fabric tape there to give us a little bit more room. We've actually already got the connections made but we can show you how to do it. It's super easy. So here's what our connectors look like. So pretend this is going to be the factory wire that's already in the vehicle. We're going to place that on one side there and then pretend our blue wire is the one coming from the converter box. Now we don't need to run it all the way through. I'm just going to run it to about the tip there and then we'll simply just close this connector there. You're going to need a pair of pliers to really cramp that down 
and that's going to splice into both of the circuits there. We're not actually completely severing the factory connection. So you would just take your set of pliers to completely close that off, and that's pretty much how we're going to make our connections from here on out. It's super simple and easy to do. So now we're going to take that yellow wire. We're going to route that over here sort of in this little area. We're going to route it over to the driver's side and we're going to attach that to the green wire with the blue stripe. It's the same color wire that we attached over here on the passenger side. And that's going to be for the left hand stop slash turn signal circuit. So you're going to have two other wires coming off the converter box there. It's going to be the black and the white wire. So we're going to route that underneath this panel here. You can see where we have it coming out. And this is actually going to go to the battery. The black wire is going to go to the positive battery terminal. So we're going to splice the fuse holder that comes into our kit on one end. You can see that there we have our black wire going into the butt connector. You want to make sure that the fuse is not installed for that step there. So go ahead and take that out. And then we're already going to have the ring terminal clamped onto the end of our fuse holder. We're going to remove that nut there with a 10 millimeter socket. We'll simply secure that down there once we have the ring terminal on there. The white wire then, we're going to continue running that over here. We went ahead and tucked it behind that little pad there. And we're attaching it to a factory ground. So that's another 10 millimeter nut. You'll remove that. You can crimp on. Yours probably is going to be yellow, the little ring clamp that comes in the kit. And then we'll simply attach it to that ground there and then we'll re-secure the nut. So now we're going to come outside the vehicle over on the passenger side and if we look just directly above our exhaust we should see a nice large grommet here. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a 3 8 inch drill bit. You're going to drill a hole in the outside edge of this grommet. We need to be careful that we stay on this outside edge because we have some wires running through the center there. So you're going to go ahead and just drill this hole out and what this is going to allow us to do is we're going to take the output side of the wires from our wiring harness that come off the converter box. You can see we have this bundle of wires here. It has the green, white, purple, yellow, brown, black, and blue. And we're going to be routing that bundle of wires out through that hole that we drilled in the grommet. And you can see here this is the factory harness that we just have it zip tied to to keep it in place. And then we have it routed pretty much under the hitch all the way to over to the driver's side. So here you can see we have our bundle of wires coming out over here on the driver's side. So what you're gonna do is, we should already have this Z bracket installed here, attaching to the latching mechanism. We're gonna install the seven way connector to that bracket. So we're gonna have the included hardware, it's just a couple screws here on either side. And once we have that on there, we're gonna pass our wires down through that opening. And then we're gonna take the seven way connector here so there's going to be two screws here, one on the top, one on the bottom. Once we undo those screws, it's going to bring out this little terminal block here. So we're going to run our wires through the seven-way body once we have the terminal block removed. And we're pretty much just going to close them in the lid there. And then we're going to begin attaching them to this terminal block. So we need to pay attention to our instructions here when we're wiring this up. Because if you look on the actual terminal block, you can see the wire colors are labeled. These are actually incorrect. We need to go by the instructions in regards to how we attach those wires. It's pretty simple. We'll just strip off about a quarter of the jacket off each end. You'll take a Phillips head screwdriver. You'll loosen that screw and that'll bring those two plates apart. You'll stuff your wire down into there and then you'll tighten it up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to reinstall our taillights temporarily and then we're going to plug in a seven way tester. If you don't have one, it's going to make things a little bit easier for you guys, but you can use your trailer as well. We're going to plug into the seven way here, insert your fuse into the fuse holder, and then we're going to test all our signals to make sure everything was done properly. So you can see now we got our tester plugged in. We went ahead and just make sure everything was working properly. But once we've ensured that, we can go ahead and resecure the terminal block inside the seven way housing. So we're actually going to be using our tester here because it's going to make things a little bit easier. But again, there's simply going to be one screw, one on the top, one on the bottom. You want to make sure that the orientation of the terminal block matches the one of the picture inside your instructions. Once we get the two screws in securing our terminal block inside the housing, there's going to be a screw up top there. And that's going to collapse that grommet up at the top there where we have our wires running in. And this is going to do a better job of help keeping out any debris. So now we're going to secure the seven way to the bracket here using the hardware provided. 
So the hinge portion is going to be facing the front of the vehicle here. So you'll insert your screw there. And then we have our nut up top. So there's going to be one of these in each of the corners here. Once we get them all in place, we'll tighten them down. So now I'm going to take some silicone here. I'm going to try to squeeze it in between the wires and that grommet just to seal everything up here so we don't have to worry about any water getting inside the vehicle. Doesn't need to be pretty, just needs to work. So now we're going to reinstall our panel here that has our sensors on it. So there's going to be a bracket here on our hitch. As we said earlier, we're going to retain three of the factory fasteners here and attach it to the panel like so. And then don't forget to come over here and plug in your wiring harness. Now we need to do a little bit of trimming. So we're going to take this panel here. The underside has that heat shield on it. This was the one that was attached directly to the bottom of the fascia in the center. So we need to go ahead and trim this to allow some clearance here. So luckily we already have some factory cut lines here we can utilize. But on this part here we're basically just going to go over, go a little bit above what the factory cut line wanted us to cut out. But what we're going to do is we're just going to take a rotary tool here. We're going to begin cutting those tabs out for the factory panel. And then we're going to come straight across for our new opening. Now we can come back with a file or I like to use a razor knife and just clean up all those rough edges. And now we can go ahead and reinstall all the panels and the fascia that were removed earlier in the reverse order. So now we're going to go ahead and test out our wiring here. What we're going to do first is the brakes, the left turn, the right turn, and then the running lights. And if we had a brake controller, we could hook that up and test it as well, but we actually don't have one hooked up at this time, so we can't show you this. But something else you can see is the 12 volt accessory here. We have power to that. Therefore, everything was installed correctly and we're good to go. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Stealth Hitches Hidden Trailer Hitch Receiver here on a 2021 BMW X5.